Welcome. Listen to these songs as you prepare your heart and your mind for the message. First Corinthians 13, 1 to 13. What is love? First Corinthians 13, 1 to 13. So this reading is coming from First Corinthians 13, verses 1 to 13. And it's titled, Love is Indispensable. And this begins God's holy word. And yet I will show you the most excellent way if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love. I am only a surrounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I give, if I, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. If it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love, love never fails. But where there are prophecies, there will they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But the but when but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the way of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And Amen. And Amen. Word, Thanks God. be to God for the reading of his word. Thank you, church. And thank the Lord for allowing me to take this wonderful opportunity to bring his word. What is love? Taken from 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 13. But before I do, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight as you give us this day our daily bread. O oh Lord, my strength, Redeemer. And my Redeemer. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, I pray that you have come this morning with an open heart to receive God's holy word. You know, when we hear the word love, it has lost its meaning and its value in this world. We use love to get the things that we want. We use love to describe our elation at times like Christmas Day. We will say, ooh, I love this. This is what I've been waiting for. That's what I've always wanted. We use love to create a feeling within someone 
to give us what we want in a non-committed relationship. Now, I hope I don't need to explain this any further. We tell our children we love them, but we don't really understand what it is that we're saying. We tell our family members, our friends, or even someone that we really hardly even know that we love them. But what are we really saying or trying to convey? Even Jerry Springer, his guests often said, you know I love you, right? <laughs> but, and it goes on. Inevitably, there seems to be a mischaracterization of the word love. How, church, do we love someone? Are there different kinds of love? How should we love? Church, what is love? I will answer these questions in part in the next few minutes. Let's take a look at the scriptures and see what it says about love. Now I invite you to grab a pen and paper or your notes page on your tablet or phone. We will cover many scriptures that you can review and or study later on. Amen. So we go to chapter 13 of First, First Corinthians, which my son wonderfully read. Thank you, Alan. Speaks of this love. So let's dive right on into it. It starts, if I speak in the tongues of men, or of angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. This means what I'm saying is just making a loud noise. It really doesn't mean anything. Now I'm sure most of you know James Brown he wrote a song too, and it's titled, Just Talking Loud and Saying Nothing. <laughs> if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, Church, I am nothing. Imagine, Jesus told the disciples in Matthew 17, 20 to 21, that if they had faith the size of a mustard seed, nothing would be impossible for them. Now, church, can you imagine if you had that kind of faith and being able to move your mountains and not have love, what he's saying is all that would be worthless. Wow. If I gave all my possessions to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast. One version says, to offer my body to be burnt as a martyr, but do not have love? 
Church, I would gain nothing. Let that settle in for a moment. Now let's see if we could find ourselves in this next section where we hear what is love. Church, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. Now let me ask you, church, did you find the ones that fit you perfectly? I hope you did. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Because we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, Paul said, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror. But then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then shall I know fully, even as I fully no. And now these three remain faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of all these is love. So the next question was. Are there different kinds of love? And church, I'm here to tell you, yes. There are two types of love. Uh, you may ask, Brother Ewan, what kind of love are they? And I'm certainly glad you asked that. Because there is conditional love. And there is unconditional love. You see, conditional love is based on a quid quo pro kind of love. I love you if, if you love me first, then I love you. If you show me love in return, I will certainly love you. If your bank account could afford me, I love you. If everything is all good, sure, I love you. These church are all superficial. 
They don't mean a thing. You see, church, our society confuses love and lust. I don't believe you heard me. Our society, our world, our cities, our states, our country, our nation confuses love and lust. Now, unlike lust, God's kind of love is directed outward towards others, not inward towards ourselves. But let me tell you about real love, unconditional love. You see, God shows us unconditional love. God is the ultimate and demonstrated unconditional love. And he sets the example for all of us in how to love without expectation. So Romans 5, 8 says, but God showed how much love he had for us by having Christ to die on the cross for us, even though we were sinful. We, not, we did not deserve his love. 1 John 4 and 8 said, but anyone who does not love does not know God because God mm -hmm. is love. 1 John 4 and 16 says, We know how much love God has and how he loved us. And we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. John 3, 16 explains, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, you were saved by faith in God who treats us much better than we deserve. This is God's gift to you and not anything you have done on your own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 3, Jeremiah 31 and verse 3 says, The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Titus 3, verse 4 to 5 says, But when the goodness of a loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of works by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of, recon reconciliation, and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2 and verse 1 asks, Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Unconditional love. Unconditional love is powerful, church. 
When we love unconditionally, and when we receive unconditional love, we find that there is power in those feelings and actions. I said when we love unconditionally, and when we receive unconditional love, we find that there is power in those feelings and actions. Amen. We find hope. We find courage. Mm -hmm. Things we never knew to expect to come from giving to one another without any expectations. Love is utterly unselfish. This kind of love goes against our natural inclinations. It is impossible to have this kind of love unless God helps us set aside our own natural desires so that we can love without expecting anything in return. Yeah. We can't manufacture this kind of love when we don't feel it, church. We gain it only through the Holy Spirit. We never love perfectly. Only Jesus could do that. So the more we become like Christ, the more we love, and the more we will show that love to others. Love is more important than all the spiritual gifts exercised in the church body. Love demonstrates the ultimate purpose of human existence. God's love is the reason this world exists and why he wants to spend eternity with us. We have the wonderful opportunity to love him in return and love others because we understand how love changes everything for good. Great faith, dedication, sacrifice, and miracle work and power produces very little without love. Love makes our actions and gifts useful. Although people have different gifts, everyone can have huge amount of love. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7 says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. Do you hear me, church? It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes and it always preserves. I suggest, church, that we go back and read those chapters in the Bible throughout this week as we continue into our Christmas holiday and think about the real reason for the season. 1 John 4, 18 says, Such love has no fear, because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows 
that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. We love each other because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is not telling the truth. For if we love, if we don't love people who we can see, how can we love God who we can't see? And he has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their fellow believers. 1 John 3, 16 to 19 says, we know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. If, everyone, if anyone has enough money to live well and see a brother or sister in need, but shows no compassion, how could God's love be in that person? My hmm. dear children, let not, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our action. I repeat it, my dear children. Let us not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Mm. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth. So we will be confident when we stand before God. First Peter 4 and 8 says, And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Ephesians 3, 14 and 19, Paul's prayer for spiritual growth. And he said, when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from the, his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Jesus Christ will make his home in your heart as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Mm -hmm. And you may know and have the power to understand all God's people should know how wide, how long, how high, and how deep is his love. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. You see, church, sometimes unconditional love is hard. When we love unconditionally, it means that we even have to love people in tough times. This means loving someone when they're being rude or inconsiderate. It means 
loving our enemies. This means unconditional love takes work. Matthew 5, 43 to 48 says, You have heard people say, Love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But I tell you to love your enemies and pray for them. Pray for anyone who mistreats you. Then you will be acting like your father in heaven. He makes the sun rise on both the good and the bad. And he sends the rain for the ones who do right and the ones who do wrong. If you love only those people who love you, will God reward you for that? Even the tax collectors love their friends. If you greet only your friends, What's so great about that? Mm -hmm. Don't even unbelievers do that? But you must also act like your father in heaven. Luke 6 and 27 says, But to you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those that hate you. Mm. Yes, sir. Uh, mm. Romans 12, 9 and 10 That's says, the word. Be sincere in your love for others. Hate everything that is evil and hold tight to everything that is good. Love each other as brothers and sisters and honor each other more than you do yourself. 1 Timothy 1.5 says, You must teach all believers to be filled with genuine love as well as a good conscience and true faith. Romans 3.23 says, For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. Mark 12 and 31 says, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. How should we love each other, church? How should we love each other? Romans 12, 19 says, Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. And Romans 13, 8 continues, Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves his neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. John 15 and 12, Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Ephesians 4, 31 to 32 says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior, and be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Jesus Christ, has forgiven you. So church, what is love? See, love is a gift. One of nine gifts given to us. Galatians 5.22 explains, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, 
goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love is the fruit of the Spirit that was sent from the Father to dwell within us. We have the fruit of the Spirit within us, church. Did you hear me? We have the fruit of the Spirit within us. But we need to exercise that gift, church, and not let it just sit on a shelf and collect dust. But don't be discouraged. And don't get to feel like you're failing and falling short in showing love. Paul gives us hope when he wrote, right now, we have only partially and incomplete knowledge. We can't do anything perfectly. We are immature like children in how we love others. As we grow closer to Christ, we will learn to love others better. So church, you see, God gives believers spiritual gifts for their lives on earth in order to build up, serve, and strengthen fellow Christians so that they can be better encouraged and equipped to share the love of God with the world. Yes, sir. Spiritual gifts are only given to believers. In eternity, we will be made perfect and complete. And we will be in the very presence of God. We will no longer need spiritual gifts, so they will come to an end. Then we will have a full understanding and appreciation for one another as unique expressions of God's infinite creativity. So church, let us treat each other with the same love and unity that we will one day share. Let us love each other without yes, sir. expectations. Yes. Let us love each other as God has loved us. Let us strive to give unconditional love. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for listening. To hear more messages like these, join us every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or hit the subscribe button to be notified each time a message is uploaded. Thank you and God bless.